Sports. We are It's D-backs baseball on a Sunday morning. Welcome to Minute Maid Park. It's August in Houston, Texas. It's steamy outside. The light coming through the glass outfield panels. Hopefully that dirt in front of home plate has dried out a little bit for the series finale. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball is presented by Sanderson Ford. Good morning from Minute Maid Park and welcome to the broadcast. Steve for you, Bob Brenly along the way. It's the Diamondbacks and the Astros, the series finale here. And the Diamondbacks with a chance here today to take the first two series on this three-city road trip. But, Bob, if they're going to do that, they're going to have to figure out a way to contain Carlos Correa, the 20-year-old shortstop. One of the best-looking young players in the game. We were bemoaning the fact that he had a couple of cheap homers into that Crawford box, but uh, he proved... Uh, all of us wrong yesterday going opposite field over the bullpen out there in right center. This guy is an amazing combination of skill and talent. Number one overall pick. We hope Dansby Swanson turns out to be something like Carlos Correa. Yeah, we'll take that right now. Where do we sign the pitching matchup today for the Gastrones? It's Colin McHugh and that big curveball. And for the Diamondbacks, it's left-hander Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray has been a good road warrior in six starts this year. The three and two record ERA just over one and a half, and he's been really good against the American League West. Hopefully, those two trends will continue here today. And of course, in American League Park, Paul Goldschmidt back in his native Houston, Texas, is the Diamondbacks DH today. Jake Lamb starts at first base, so we are deep in the heart of Texas, where Goldie grew up watching the Astros and the Killer Bees. We'll hear from Paul about that. And then it's first pitch, the Diamondbacks and the Astros from Houston, Texas. Against the Houston Astros, the rubber match of this three-game weekend series. Jody Jackson with you here on the field, and we've told you a little bit about it this weekend. Paul Goldschmidt back home. He grew up 
near Houston, the Woodlands, in fact, a suburb, went to high school at Woodlands High School, winning the national championship there in 2006. And we know how important Paul Goldschmidt is to the Arizona Diamondbacks. I had the chance on Friday afternoon to talk to Goldie about being back home. I've been here a couple times uh, you know, with the D-backs before. Um, it's a great ballpark, and it should be, uh, I'm guessing they're going to have some good crowds this weekend. I know they got, uh, you know, some ceremonies and stuff playing with Biggio going into the Hall of Fame. So it'll be cool, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll go out there and play well. Anyone who grew up around the same age I did in Houston was, was near at the top of the list. So definitely him and Bagwell and, and Berkman next, and I'm, I'm sure many others. I, I watched him play every night. And then Goldie went from the Woodlands High School to Texas State, playing there from 2007 to 2009. The all-time leader there in home runs and RBIs. I had the chance to talk to his high school coach here on Friday evening. He's got some fans, friends, and family here in the ballpark here today. So looking to help lead the Diamondbacks back on another winning streak. He is America's first baseman deep in the heart of Texas. And the Diamondbacks, well, they look to hit a few home runs maybe today. If that's going to be the way to combat this Astros potent lineup, we will see. That's been the name of the game here in Houston so far in the first two games. What lies ahead? Find out. Coming up next. On Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by your Valley Honda dealers, where you'll get more standard features for less money. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers. And by Arizona Tire Pros, for the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros location today.
Minute Park in Houston, Texas. Steve Berthume, Bob Brenly, and Jody Jackson with you. It's breakfast with the Diamondbacks today, back home in the great state of Arizona. And deep in the heart of Texas, the Diamondbacks with a chance to make it two series wins on this three-city road trip. We're off to Washington, D.C. After this one today, the rubber game of this three-game series, the D-backs and the Astros. Diamondbacks winners of eight of their last 12, and today here in Houston, a chance for their second straight series win. Your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Astros, it's 28-year-old right-hander Colin McHugh. He won 11 games last year, finished fourth in the Rookie of the Year voting, and now a chance to tie his teammate Dallas Keuchel for the American League lead in wins this year. The ERA last season was 273. Now you see right here, it's much higher than that this year, but the Astros are a better team than last year, and that has helped improve McHugh's record 12-5 and five going into his 22nd start. And you'll see him use a lot of breaking balls in the game today, both the curve and the slider. Uh, fastball sits in the low 90s, but uh, relies heavily on both the curve and the slider in just about any situation against any hitter. He will spin that big curveball up there. It's been a tremendous pitch for him. Let's take a look at the lineup for Chip Hale's Diamondbacks. Against this Astros right-hander. Hender and Ciarte leading off out in center field. Yasmani Tomas out in right field. Paul Goldschmidt DHing hitting third today. David Peralta having a hot road trip. He'll be cleaning up behind Goldie today. Wellington Castillo also having a great road trip doing the catching. Jake Lamb at first base today. Aaron Hill at third. He was tested severely in that ball game last night. A lot of rockets hit the third. Cliff Pennington at second base and Nick Ahmed at shortstop. And the newest Astro is making his third start for Houston. Carlos Gomez acquired Thursday from the Milwaukee Brewers. Let's take a look now at the Astros. Defensively, it's our mid-first bank starting defense for Houston. Kevin Gaddis will be playing out in left field today. Carlos Gomez in center. Jake Marisnik over in right field. It'll be Jed Lowry and Carlos Correa on the left side of the infield with Jose Altuve and Marwin Gonzalez on the right side. Jason Castro once again behind the plate this afternoon for right-hander Colin McHugh. Astros begin play today 13 games over 500 and leading the AL West by three over the Angels. Dale Scott, the crew chief, is our plate umpire this afternoon. We are underway the series finale in Houston. All one to Ender in Ciarte. Ender 294 and three home runs. A uh, steamy 94 outside right now, just after 1 o'clock local time, but a comfortable 73 degrees inside Minute Bank Park. One and two. Colin McHugh said he'd like to throw more strikes early in the ball game today. Command that fastball a little bit more than he has recently. And when the fastball command is not there for him, he'll go to that slider a lot. He's been doing that more often in some of his recent starts. And, of course, he's got that big spinning curveball. That's a great plan of attack for any pitcher. If you can command that slider and throw it for strikes in fastball counts, you can get a lot of weak contact, a lot of swings and misses. But McHugh will occasionally get wild out there. He'll occasionally get hit a lot. But more than occasionally, he wins. He's gone 6-2 and two over his last eight starts. And in those six wins, the Astros have averaged nearly seven runs a game. He's been the big run support guy in this rotation. It's this up in the air to very short left field. Evan Gaddis is out there this afternoon, and that's the first out. That's really all there is in this ballpark, short left field, because <laughs> medium depth is out of the ballpark. Yeah, ask uh, Correa about that in his first at bat last night. A little check swing homer, very deep, 436 to straightaway center, up that hill, Towels Hill, with a flag pole in the field of play. And as Chip Hale said the other day, this play, uh, ballpark plays short in the corners and very deep in the middle. As Monty Tomas. Two down.
Ran straight through the base that time after uh, he was removed from the ball game last night after failing at to run out of ground ball to Chip Hale's satisfaction. Yeah, lesson learned the hard way. Hit a hard ground ball to first base. Uh, appeared to be an easy out, but that's no excuse for not running all the way to first base. Yasmani peeled off about halfway down the line, and uh, Chip let him have a seat next to him on the bench for the rest of the game. Chip said afterward he told reporters the Diamondbacks will take care of that kind of stuff inside the family and it's a, a non issue moving forward as far as they're concerned. Here's Goldie leading the National League and hitting at 346. He leads the league in hits. Drives this one high in the air left center. Gomez is out there and he's got room. A quick nine pitch first for Colin McHugh. Astros coming up. Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks. It's Robbie Ray. He made his big league debut against these Astros last May when he was with the Tigers and he got the victory. Five and a third, a run on five hits. He had five strikeouts. That was at Comerica Park in Detroit. And now he'll face the Astros for the second time. This was the first time I faced uh, when I came up last year and uh, it was a good day. You know, I was able to go out there and, and give my team a win. You know, this team, while they're having a lot more success, some of the key components still there. What's the key for this lineup? I just keep the ball down. You know, as you saw last night, the ball can get out of this park pretty quick. So <clears throat> just keep the ball down, keep it on the ground, and, and let the defense do the work like they've been doing. Well, Robbie tied a career high, eight strikeouts to kick off this road trip. That was Monday at Safeco Field in Seattle. And here's Jose Altuve to lead it off. In June and July, Robbie was the Diamondbacks' most consistent starting pitcher. He has given up two earned runs or fewer in eight of his 11 starts this year. You know, the one thing we were a little concerned about with Robbie Ray, given his past history, was his ability to consistently throw strikes, but it really hasn't been that much of an issue for him. I guess if he's had an issue, it's finding a way to put guys away once he gets to that two-strike count. A lot of foul balls. One and one on Altuve. Fly ball center field. Ender and Ciarte is there. A fly ball out. The lineup for A.J. Hinches, Houston Astros. Mighty Mouse, Jose Altuve once again at the top playing second base. Carlos Gomez in center field. Carlos Correa at shortstop. Evan Gaddis. Playing left field today with Jed Lowry at third, Marwin Gonzalez at first, Chris Carter serving as the DH. You see the numbers for Jason Castro over his last five games. He'll be doing the catching, and Jake Marisnik, the right field. Carlos Gomez, three for five, including a double last night, his first hit as an Astro. He's in there at 264 and eight home runs. 
Came over from Milwaukee at the trade deadline. Went 0 for 5 in Friday's series opener as Houston debuted. And if it's possible to swing harder than he did as a member of the Brewers, I think Gomez has been doing that here. The helmets come off a few times. Oh, man. There's the strike. Acquired from Milwaukee along with pitcher Mike Fires for a package of prospects. Fires is supposed to make his Astros debut on Tuesday. He'll start against the Rangers in Arlington. Two and two. Probably getting that outside strike call from Dale Scott back there. This might have been a C.B. Bucknor strike. How about wow. that? And there's one of those swings. Gomez chases that one up and away. First strikeout for Robbie Ray. Two down. And here comes Carlos Correa. Let's get ahead and count that elevated fastball is a good way to go to a very aggressive hacker in Carlos Gomez. Can't lay off that one well out of the strike zone. Carlos Correa, 299 batting average, leads the Astros. He's now got 12 home runs after hitting two more last night. 12 homers in his first 46 career games. That's an Astros record. And he has been very impressive. It's a uh, one thing to hear about these guys and see the occasional highlight, Bob, but when you watch them over the course of a three-game series, you go, wow, they really have something here. You know, those uh, prospects don't always live up to their billing. I think Carlos Correa has done so up to this point in his very young major league career. You think of Chris Bryant in Chicago that hit the ground running with the Cubs. First overall pick in the draft three years ago called up from the minor leagues and made his big leg debut on June the 8th and since his call up he leads the Astros in homers hits doubles and RBIs. Base hit and one more to the list. He's now hit in seven straight games and 16 of his last 17 he's already the king here in Houston at the age of 20. Take a look at the Diamondbacks around their left-hander, Robbie Ray. It's our mid-first bank starting defense. Left to right, it'll be David Peralta, Ender Inciarte, and Yasmani Tomas across the outfield. Aaron Hill and Nick Ahmed on the left side of the infield. Cliff Pennington and Jake Lamb on the right side. Willing Castillo doing the catching for lefty Robbie Ray. Aaron Hill was joking yesterday, said he should have had his catcher's gear on down there at third last night. He Got a little banged up, it looks like, too. And a couple of shots hit right at him. Those strawberries, I talk about them all the time. A lot of guys get them on their elbows from diving head first and sometimes on top of their knees from sliding head first. And once you get them, you usually keep them all season long. Evan Gaddis, 247, 16 homers. He leads the Astros in RBIs. Correa down there at first, five for six in his stolen base attempt so far. Before we get much deeper in the ball game, let's take a look at our Valley Honda keys to the ball game. Derail the train. Every oh, wow. time the Astros hit a homer, that train runs back and forth out there in left field. And avoid liftoff for the base dealers. We mentioned that the Astros, uh, besides leading the American League in homers, they also lead the American League in stolen bases. Diamondbacks have been able to shut them down so far in this series as far as the stolen base goes. So they'll keep Correa close. 2 0 on Gaddis, who's been the DH. He's out there in left field this afternoon. Two hits and two bases on balls in the series so far. A bouncer. Cliff Pennington. Tough throw. What a play by Penny. And they get Gaddis at first. Cliff Pennington backing up across his body, way out there in right center field. Makes a nice play to end the first. No score in Houston.
last night. He's in there for Chris Owings at second base this afternoon. And how about this one to end the first? Boy, it shows great range, first of all, just to get to that ball, playing the exaggerated shift. And then what a throw back against his own body, running out into shallow right field. Nicely done. The Texas A&M Aggie back here. Deep in the heart of Texas. David Peralta leads off the second against Colin McHugh. The shift is on for the Astros, and there's strike one. Peralta, 282 and nine home runs. He has raised his batting average for the year by more than 30 points over his last 31 games. That one bit him. Can't afford to lose any outfielders here. A.J. Pollock is sitting this one out again today with that issue going on behind his knee. A precautionary measure, we are told. There's a look at the Astros defensively here. They overload the right-hand side. 0-2 to Peralta. Kind of anxious to see if the Astros are as aggressive in right field with Jake Marisnik as they have been... Uh, Colby Rasmus. Yeah, Colby Rasmus playing extremely shallow in right field, especially for the right-handed hitters. Uh, I mean, to the point where he's only a few steps out into that outfield grass. Marisnik is a very good defensive outfielder. He has been the center fielder. He was their opening day center fielder. But now that they've got Gomez from the Brewers, Marisnik will kind of roam around out there, says A.J. Hinch. He'll play a little bit of everywhere to make room for Gomez, who's... Got a gold glove on his mantle. Boy, Peralta knew it. First strikeout for McHugh. Put this one right down the middle of the plate. There it is. Beef mode. Wellington Castillo. 241 for the year, 11 home runs. He has homered four times in his last four games. And Castillo back behind the plate today. He looked like a kid in a first day of school outfit that didn't quite fit right <laughs> last night. He was a fidgety 0 for 3, three strikeouts as the DH. Following his three hit night here on Friday. He did not like the DH. It was not a good fit. But uh, sometimes you got to do that to get the bat in there and try and give him a break. And Goldie is the DH here today. I'm, I'm sure he's less than thrilled. I was going to say, you want to talk about a caged lion. Goldie probably pacing right now behind the dugout, just waiting for his next turn. DH is a little bit easier to handle in some of these newer ballparks that have the batting cage right behind the dugout here in Houston. You have to go all the way up to the clubhouse, which is a little bit of a walk from the dugout. Base hit for Castillo. He shoots it down the left field line just by Jed Lowry. And the Diamondbacks go into beef mode here. It's a one out double. Good to see Wellington Castillo running a little better, too. Not only the hit by pitches over the last week, but that hamstring that's been bothering him for the better part of two weeks. He made a nice uh, turn down there at first base. Easily ends up at second with a one out double. Brings up the first baseman here today. It's Jay Glam. 274 and three home runs. And this is his first career big league start and first base. He's played a grand total of two innings over there. And that was last night. The shift is on. And this was Jake Friday. Upper tank and right. Boom. One for six in the series. He's got four hits on the road trip. After his triumphant return home to Seattle to start the trip. 
Laces that one down the right field line. This will score Castillo. Jake Lamb takes the turn. Marisnik drops it in the right field corner. And Jake is in there with his eighth double. It's 1-0 Diamondbacks. Back-to-back D-back doubles here in the second. That was scorched. Yeah, his swing is really starting to come around. That short, abbreviated follow-through. Got a pitch on the inside part of the plate. Had to make a little adjustment with his hands. Pull him in close to his body so he could barrel that one up down into the right field corner. The D-backs take an early 1-0 lead. Uh, for a minute, he might think about third after Marisnik dropped it on the warning track out there. But he stops at second. The RBI behind double. Still just one out. Here's Aaron Hill. Lamb and Castillo playing anything you can do, I can do better in that 10th inning. Wellington Castillo led off game one in the 10th with a homer. Jake Lamb followed with that shot to the upper deck today. Wellington gets a double, and Jake Lamb follows suit. Stay on that protein diet, beef and lamb. <laughs> Oh, and two on Hill. Making his second straight start at third base. And his 27th start this year at third. Made a whole bunch of fine defensive plays down there last night. Colin McHugh has won his last three starts, but he's not pitched especially great in any of them. He's been okay. Gave up 11 hits in six innings, still beat Texas. Pitched well enough to beat Boston two starts ago. Five runs, seven hits. He walked four in five innings in his previous start. That was last Tuesday against the Angels, but the Astros won that game 10-5. Here's Marisnik, and he makes a diving grab and right. Well, he told you he was a very good defender out there, and he just showed you why. Takes a base hit and maybe an RBI away from Aaron Hill. Yeah, most outfielders will tell you the toughest play they have to make is a diving attempt coming straight in. This ball probably has a little slicing action off of Aaron Hill's bat. Marisnik reads it perfectly, gets to the spot, and a sprawled out dive to make that catch coming straight in toward the infield. Now the entire Astros infield will huddle up on the mound as Cliff Pennington steps in. A.J. Hinch a quick visit there to rally the troops. So two outs. Lamb still in second. Here's Pennington. Two thirty-four and a homer. 0 for 2 with a walk last night. Well, the numbers would say every time A.J. Hinch makes a trip to the mound in the second inning with two outs and a runner at second, they get out of the inning. So they stick with the Sabre metrics. You looked that up, did you? <laughs> I'm sure they have. <laughs> they look up everything here. Yes, they do. They still have the shift on, and Lowry is the only defender on the left side of the infield staying near that third base bag with Lamb at second. And there is no shortstop. There's a huge hole over there. And if Cliff can somehow just roll it through there, it's an easy 2-0 Diamondback lead. But he's down 0-2. Was it Aaron Hill that rolled one through the right side last yeah. night with the shift on? Three infielders on the third base side, only the first baseman on the right side of the infield. And Aaron hit about a 99 hopper that just dribbled through in the right field for a base hit. Chris Carter took a big Superman leap at it and couldn't quite smother it. Two and two now. Castro keeps that in front. Talking about Colin McHugh, he's. Not really pitched all that well lately, but he's had tons of run support. He's won his last three starts. But uh, he's been in trouble more often than not as of late. He'd given up 25 hits in his previous 18 innings, and the Diamondbacks 
Now have already scored once here in the second. It's full three and two. So Pennington down 0 and 2 has worked the count back full three and two two outs. With Lamb at second, Nick Ahmed on deck. Ball four. Just off of that outside corner. Way to eyeball him, Cliff. Really good at bat after he was down 0 2. Nick Ahmed now. Two on and two out for the Diamondbacks. A run in. Nick is hitless in the series so far. 218 with six home runs. Drop that breaking ball in there to steal strike one. Nick Ahmed over his last 15 games, that batting average for the season has dropped more than 30 points. He is stuck in a four for 53 right now. 0 oh 2. Diamondbacks had their chances to break it open last night early, that 44 pitch second inning by Dallas Keuchel, but to. Uh, they couldn't take full advantage. Trying to pad that lead a little bit right here, needing a two out hit. They got a play on at second, and Lamb is picked off. Correa snuck in there. And Jake Lamb is out to end the threat and the inning, but the Diamondbacks get one. We start with some beef mode. We follow that up with a leg of Lamb, and it's one nothing Diamondbacks. You know, with if you know it, it'd been nine o'clock at night, and you know you could drive by the facility, and uh, you know he'd be hitting. It's uh, th th that's just Nick. You know, he he's a guy that takes extra ground balls after the extra ground balls, and he's a guy that hits after the extra hitting. You know, he's just you know that's just, that's just him. I caught up with George Springer talking about Nick Ahmed, his teammate at UConn, and I, then I went over to talk to Nick about the fact that I had uh, spoken to George, and sure enough, he was heading to the cage. He's always heading to the cage. He said, yeah, we had the passcode. We would punch in to go to the facility, 
not just nine o'clock at night. He said, I'd be there at 1 a.m. There were two cages there, and, you know, that's his key, guys, as you know, just how hard he's worked. And right now I know he's working hard to get out of the slump that he's in. But uh, Nick Ahmed and George Springer, both the products of UConn, and George was real happy for Nick um, making his way to the majors. Yeah, they played on a very good UConn team there. The Huskies that year had a whole bunch of first-round picks. Nick Ahmed, top pick, George Springer, Mike Oltz, and Matt Barnes of the Red Sox, the pitcher. Here's a former Red Sox, Jed Lowry, leads off the Astros second. I got to say, that's when my college grade point average went down when I got a key to the batting cage. Do I go to class? Do I go over to the field and hit for an hour? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lowry drives it toward the Crawford boxes. Peralta can't find it. It's off the wall, and Lowry's in at second. It's a double for Lowry, his fifth of the year. It's in the glove. Yeah, lost just, it on the way down. Yeah, lost it on the way down right there. Couldn't quite close that big outfielder's glove around the ball. That's a tough play for a left fielder in this ballpark, knowing when to give up on the ball and turn around and play the carom, or do you go all the way back to the wall and try to make the leaping catch? That time, David made the right choice, just couldn't hang on. And again, that's a very hard surface out there. There's a sort of a metal frame around that scoreboard. And you can see the squares. Those squares are metal, and if it clanks off one of those, it makes a loud sound. There's no padding out there on that thing. And if you actually hit the square where the numbers are hung, you can knock them right out. I've seen that happen, too. Like a carnival game. <laughs> hit that guy and what a stuffed animal. <laughs> Marwin Gonzalez tried a bunt for a base hit. Robbie Ray's on it, and they move Lowry along to third. One out. It's a part of the offense you don't see a lot of from the Houston Astros. They're 28th in Major League Baseball in sacrifice bunt attempts this year. A.J. Hinch once again uh, sabermetrically inclined. They just don't believe in giving up outs, but in that particular situation, moving a man to third base with one out in the inning for a fly ball hitter in Chris Carter seemed to make a little sense. 182, 17 homers. That OPS down 120 points from last season for Carter when he had 37 home runs. He sat out the series opener 0 for 3 last night. Had an RBI on a bases loaded walk. Lowry at third, one out. He's got that oven mitt on to protect that thumb on his right hand that he broke sliding into home plate in San Diego back in April. He was on the DL, had surgery, and missed more than 80 games. Well, Carter. Despite the fact that he's fifth in the major leagues in strikeouts is I can't believe I'm saying this a, a fairly disciplined hitter. He leads the Astros in walks. So figure that out. He's got four sacrifice flies on the year. Two one pitch. He'll do that a lot too. Three for his last 39 at the plate. But two of those hits are home runs. How do you explain that? Is there a way to? He's just bad at swinging at the ball. I mean. I think he does have good strike zone discipline, but once he decides to swing that bat, I think occasionally his head comes out of there. He doesn't really see the ball uh, far enough into the point of contact to consistently make contact. But when he does make contact, it goes a long way. Sure does. Sky is this one near the seats. Land will give it a look, but it's behind the Astros dugout. I mean, Carter this year is on course to finish the season with more strikeouts. 
than hits, RBIs, and home runs combined. <laughs> and there's a sense here with a very sabermetrically inclined team, of course, that maybe you know, what he gives you is wearing a little thin. The OPS is down. And the home run production hasn't been quite what it has been the last two years. I thought you were going to say he's going to end up with more strikeouts than at bats. <laughs> if, well, they may figure out a way to make that happen. 29 homers his first season in Houston. That was two years ago. Led the big leagues in strikeouts. Last year, 37 homers. Finished fifth in strikeouts. Eighth pitch of the gap bat coming up. Drives it to Inciarte in center. Lowry's at third, and here he comes. The Astros will tie the ball game. The RBI for Carter, and it's 1 1. Well, that's why you bunt with a runner on at second base and nobody out in the inning when you have a fly ball hitter coming up after the bunter a pretty good chance you're going to get that run on the plate somehow unless Carter strikes out that time he was able to make contact and loft that ball into center field for an RBI sack fly. Well buckle up here comes an Astros catcher. They have been a problem offensively in this series it's. Jason Castro Castro the Astro. Last three games, Houston catchers have hit four homers and totaled 11 RBIs. 216 and nine homers for Castro. He's got three run homers in each of his last two games. He sat out the ball game yesterday. A home run here Thursday, a walk off winner that beat the Angels. And then Friday, Castro took Ruby De La Rosa. The other way, a two seam fastball in the outer half that he poked into the Crawford boxes. And he lifts that one past a diving Jake Lamb and down the right field line. Tomas having problems in the corner there. And he's late fishing it out. The crowd wanted Castro to try for third. I'm not sure what happened out there with the Asmani. The ball disappeared into that deep right field corner. Let's see. Yeah, not a lot of foul territory all the way down in that right field corner. Jake Lamb gives it a good effort. Can't quite get to the spot. Okay, for me, uh, Jason Castro right here, he took a triple away from himself. Looking back over his shoulder, looking back over his shoulder. Hey, you got a third base coach that's getting a salary to help you out on that play. If he just picks up the third base coach, he probably ends up at third with two outs in the inning. But instead, looking back over his shoulder, looking back over his shoulder, by the time Yasmani was able to pick it up, Castro couldn't resume his trip around the bases. So he's in the scoring position with two outs for Jake Marisnik, the right fielder. There's strike one. Marisnik, 235 and five homers. And his lack of offensive production may be one reason why they felt they had to go out and acquire Carlos Gomez. Let's take another look in the right field corner at Yasmani Tomas. Yeah, we kind of lose sight once it gets down into that corner. You can see not a lot of foul territory there. Ball hit the padding and stayed down, just died right there in the corner. And once again, with the bad base running by Jason Castro, he had to stop at second. He's checked up on that dirt out there. One and two on Marisnik. Well, this is where Robbie Ray's been really good this year with runners in scoring position, opposing batters 11 for 48. That's a 229 batting average. And that ends the inning. Second strikeout for Robbie Ray, but the Astros get one through two. It's one run apiece.
the Invades Chase Field. All fans can get a zombie makeover, explore our haunted maze, and enjoy a zombie-themed post-game fireworks show presented by Gila River Casinos. Plus, fans that purchase a special event ticket pack will get the zombie survival duffel bag. Everybody needs one of those. Visit dbacks.com slash events. Could use one on this trip. Yeah. Minute Maid Park on a Sunday afternoon here in sweltering Houston, Texas. 1-1 ball game, rubber game, the whole thing. Diamondbacks Astros. And Nick Ahmed, who was at bat when Jake Lamb was picked off second base to win the second inning, will lead off the third. Uh, Dale Scott, he likes to think about that strike call. He'll uh, give it a minute, and then he'll kind of step out backwards and point. It's it's a whole thing. A roller right to Correa at shortstop. Right away. Did you ever have an ump that was behind you when you were catching that did a whole big orchestrated oh, thing on every yeah. strike like that? I caught in front of Dutch Rennert. I don't know if you remember Dutch, but uh, yeah. on a strike call, he used to jump back about five feet, turn to his right, and stick his right arm out there, and give a very loud call. It was quite a production. Dutch was the guy that would always tell me as I'm catching the warm-up pitches before the first inning, hey, Bobby, let, let me know if I miss any. I said, <laughs> don't worry, Dutch, I will. <laughs> well, it's always nice to have that option. Ender flied out his first time. One for nine in the series so far. That's one thing that's kind of been lost uh, with the umpires working both American League and National League. Now you used to have two separate umpiring crews. One for the National League, one for the American League. And you'd see the same guys dozens of times over the course of the season. Develop somewhat of a relationship with the umpires when they work behind you. And you watch those, I don't want to call them old games right now, but uh, you can watch those all over YouTube and on the internet, a whole thing. Ender carves that one out to Gattis. And you know, when, when Joe Gargiolo was doing the games with Tony Kubek, and you, you got all those games on iTunes, wherever you want, and they would have the two different umpiring crews. And they, Joe and Tony would always say, ooh, that's an American League strike. Yeah. Ooh, that's a National League strike. There was a difference, wasn't there? There really was. The American League strike zone was more vertical. They would call that high strike up there around the letters, uh, but they rarely went off the corners, either inside or outside, whereas the National League strike zone, if you can take that same rectangle and just tip it on its side, they've rarely called anything above the mid-thighs, but they would go off the corners. And then there's the C.B. Bucknor strike zone. We haven't figured out which league that works for. <laughs> How about a five-pitch third inning for Colin McHugh? He retires Tomas. We're tied at one in Houston.
Houston. After this ball game, we're on a plane headed to the nation's capital. We take a look at the rest of this road trip. Let's go places brought to you by your Valley Toyota dealers. Four against the Nationals. Zach Godley who starts it off tomorrow against Doug Fister. How about Corbin and Scherzer on Tuesday? That'll be fun. Feel bad for Joe Ross on Thursday. D-backs are going to take out all their Tyson Ross frustrations on the younger brother. The younger brother might be as good or better mm-hmm. than the older brother, the way he's pitched. Here's Altuve. You were talking about strike zones, Bob. Jose Altuve is short. <laughs> yeah. He's five feet six inches tall, and that actually hurts him because now you're you're on the pitch FX stuff, and it's all computerized. But he just hits, it doesn't matter. Drops it into right center. Just his second hit in the series. On the pitch FX, the automated strike zone stuff, his strike zone, the lower part of the strike zone is lower than the average strike zone by about three inches. The tarp top part is lower by five inches. So, you know, think about what he's got to go through just to get base hits at five feet six. He's got a very different strike zone himself. Yeah. And I, I see some subtle changes in his approach at the plate. It looks like he's a little farther off the plate this year. And... Uh, the first two games this series, trying to pull a lot of pitches, but today driving that ball the opposite way, flied out to Ender in center field in his first at bat, and that time a base hit to right center. Carlos Gomez struck out his first time. Looked a little surprised by that Robbie Ray fastball. That's something that Chip Hale talked about before the ball game. He said this was going to be a fun matchup. Because he was especially interested to see how the Astros respond to the life on Robbie Ray's fastball. And Gomez looked a little overwhelmed on that one. Now on this one, drives it deep to right, backs up Tomas at the track, at the wall, and he's got it. Just enough room out there for Yasmani, allowed out number one here in the Eastern Third. Well, Houston Texans football star J.J. Watt was here the other day. How about this? I mean, he makes Altuve look like an appetizer. Yeah, he could carry Altuve in his back pocket if he wanted to. J.J. Watt was here while the Angels were in town, actually, taking batting practice, and he knocked a few into the Crawford boxes. Usually he knocks quarterbacks into the Crawford boxes, this time baseball. <laughs> Carlos Correa. this Carlos Correa was born on September 22nd 1994 Shut up. Now you think about the Astros lineup in 1994 they had a left fielder by the name of Luis Gonzalez center fielder Steve Finley Biggio and Bagwell on the right side of the infield Greg Swindell was pitching for the Astros that year Ken Caminiti third baseman you can't even tell stories to Correa he doesn't know who any of these guys are <laughs> <laughs> He's 20 years old. He'll turn 21 in September. There's Gonzo working a radio sign with the Governor Greg Schulte. Yeah, Gonzo's big here. A lot of fans still remember Luis Gonzalez in his days as a member of the Astros. He's big everywhere. Everywhere. And now his son is about to become a, a Texan as well, committed to TCU. He's going to be a very good ball player. And I saw Gonzo doing some online shopping over there in the radio booth today. He, had, uh, he was buying a TCU backpack. <laughs> he better start uh, booking some plane tickets. He'll be down here a lot. Dallas, of course, Texas Christian University. That's a neat little ballpark for a college stadium. They have a, a small second deck. Oh, I mean, it only extends about uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way down the foul lines on the first and third base side, but it's uh, kind of neat to have an upper deck at a college ballpark. We talk about football in Texas. Some of these schools have incredible baseball mm-hmm. programs. I mean, it's big time. So you want to one on Korea. There goes Altuve, the league leader in stolen bases. And he's in there again, number 28. He picked his spot, and he's in there. That was a lot closer than it should have been. Wellington Castillo put that throw right on the money to Cliff Pennington. The 
Looks like he may have gotten that put in just underneath the tag there at the end. In the meantime, it's three and one on Correa. They're down two, they had second and one out. Correa has singled his first time up. He's four for ten in the series with four RBIs. They got Altuve picked off, but he's back in turn. I think Robbie was just kind of looking back there, yep. saw yet Altuve way off the bag and decided to throw over. Yeah, that's unfortunate. A lot of times a pitcher will just do that inside move to try to shorten up that runner's lead, but occasionally you'll catch him leaning the wrong way. You should always be ready to throw. Well, you can always stop if Altuve's on his way back to the bag. You just hang on to the baseball. If he breaks for third, be ready to throw. 3-1 pitch. All four. First walk issued by Robbie. Astros have two on and one out. For Evan Gattis. Speaking of TCU, let's take a look at our State Farm Farm Report of the game. Alex Young, uh, the lefty drafted out of TCU, the Diamondbacks' second pick of the draft this year, made his professional debut in the Arizona League against the Brewers, one scoreless inning. Comes Chip Hale. Conference time. One on, two out. Or pardon me, two on, one out. And Gaddis the hitter. And of course, the uh, Astros have just bludgeoned the home run balls in this series so far. And nobody can bludgeon a baseball like Evan Gaddis. Short in the corners and big in the middle. Minute Maid Park here in Houston. 1-1 one -one ball game. As if he didn't know that before. Evan Gaddis discovered that last night. He hit an absolute missile to center field last night. It uh, was very nearly caught out there. Just at the base of Tal's Hill. Just to the left of the hill. Off the wall for a long double. About a 420 foot double. It's like the polo grounds out there. Only with a hill and a flagpole. 0 and 1. Here it is. Towels Hill, which will be going away after this season, we're told. And the flagpole, which is in play, as you can see right there, will disappear as well. This was the double by Evan Gaddis in the ball game yesterday. A really loud drive to center field. He's right there on his horse out there in center field. Didn't quite get to the right spot. Was going to play the carom off the wall. But uh, that's a home run in a lot of ballparks in the major leagues. Just a big burly guy up there. 6'4", 260, no batting gloves. Flower seeds in his beard. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, we documented uh, the other night uh, some of the off field issues that he had was away from the game for a while, but now back in a big way. You got to believe that he appreciates every minute he's on a big league roster and every opportunity he gets to swing that bat. Maybe a little more so than some guys uh, who've taken the easy road to the big leagues. Yeah, had some problems with depression, addiction as a young man. Just kind of wandered the wilderness working odd jobs. Ended up playing college ball at the University of Texas of the Permian Basin. And the Braves found him there in the 23rd round. UTPB. <laughs> Two and one. Well, Robbie Ray, seven of his last nine pitches have been outside the strike zone. And he's behind on Gattis, three and one.
given the approach of these Astros hitters in this series, uh, I got to believe that this pitch is close to the strike zone. You're going to see some kind of whirly bird uppercut home run swing from Evan Gaddis. Holt smash. Altuve is the runner at second and Correa at first. Three and one on Gaddis. Even if it's not close <laughs> to the strike zone. You call that one. <laughs> well, that's his calling card. That's why he's on the ball club. Get that thing up into Crawford box seats as often as you can. As we saw in the ball game last night, it doesn't always have to be a strike, and it doesn't always have to be a pretty swing to produce a home run to left field in this park. Bobby Ray's 50th pitch on the way, three and two. Bouncer short to shortstop. Ahmed oh, the little nice. shovel pass to Aaron Hill and they get the force on Altuve at third. They get the lead runner there. It was a very slowly hit bouncer. And Ahmed with that little Doug Flutie shovel pass gets the lead runner. That's a heads up play right there. Nine out of ten shortstops in the major leagues would have been content just to throw across the diamond, take the easy out at first base, but then the Astros would have had two runners in scoring position with two outs. Instead, he gets the lead guy at third, and now only one man in scoring position for Jed Lowry. Lowry doubled and scored his first time up. Pennington at second. They go the short way, and Robbie Ray pitches out of trouble. He keeps it a 1 1 ball game in Houston. Continue their five part feature on Randy Johnson during his Hall of Fame week tomorrow part two as Randy and his family stay in the haunted hotel. Sounds like the Munsters. <laughs> it's Randy Johnson Road to Cooperstown presented by Chaz Roberts tomorrow 3 30 only on Fox Sports. Arizona. 
Now we have a bonus this day in baseball history for you on this date in 1998. The big unit Randy Johnson made his first start as an Astro. 6-2 victory over the Pirates. 11 starts went 10 and 1. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. 11 straight first pitch strikes from Colin McHugh and make it 12 in a row. Strike one to Goldie who flied out his first time. Goldie last night 0 for 3 a pair of strikeouts that snapped his 12 game hitting streak. And just the second game since the All-Star break that he's gone without a hit. Neil Scott will give Jason Castro a moment here. It's not going to feel any better in 15 seconds, Dale. So let's just keep playing. <laughs> 40 pitches for McHugh, 30 strikes. And he's spinning it up there. That's what he'll do. It gets tremendous spin on his breaking balls. That's something the Astros, they keep track of everything. They talk about a lot with Colin McHugh, his spin rate, the number of revolutions per minute the baseball is turning. For whatever reason, McHugh has an exceptionally high spin rate on that curveball. And because of that, it's harder for batters to hit it. And the spin rate is one of the reasons they like McHugh enough to pick him up on the waivers before last year. That's becoming like the new velocity. Mm -hmm. You can always talk about velo, velo, how hard the guy throws it. Now they're talking about spin rate on the breaking ball. There was a study last year. Most curveballs spin about 1,500 times per minute. Colin McHugh last year had a curveball that was spinning 2,000 times a minute. So you get more spin and more movement on the pitch. All right, Dickey throws a knuckleball that doesn't spin at all. And that moves pretty well. <laughs> that one moves away from Goldie's bat. He strikes out. Second strikeout for Colin McHugh. Uh, were the guys when you were catching that spun the ball better than others? Yeah. Uh, guys that threw better breaking balls. You know, obviously the more spin you can get on the ball, the more air resistance it builds up on the bottom half of the baseball, causing it to drop as it gets into the hitting zone. And the harder you can spin it or the more revolutions you can generate, the more the ball's going to break. David Peralta. Well, the Astros were always looking for undervalued assets, you know, money ball the whole thing. And they looked at Colin McHugh and they saw the numbers. He'd been with a couple of teams before, and they just, you know, most teams just went, ah, you know, he's all right. But the Astros saw the spin rate and thought, you know, there might be true value there that's not indicated by the surface statistics, the usual ERA and stuff. And, and they were right. He's been pretty good for them. Yeah, spin rate on the various pitches by the Astros staff. Also, uh Exit velocity off the bat of the hitters is a way they uh, tend to evaluate guys and uh, how hard they hit the ball. Figuring guys that hit the ball hard more often are going to get more hits. Another strikeout for McHugh. Back to back punch outs. He gets Goldie and Peralta to open up the fourth. Right, here's the slide that struck out Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, I can't, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can't <laughs> count fast enough, but uh, got just enough sliding action away from the right handed hitter to get the swing and a miss from Goldie. I'm going to say 2,000. <laughs> Revolutions a minute there. This guy was sensational for Houston down the stretch last season. He did not lose a game last year after July 27th. He was 7 and 0 over his last 10 starts. His ERA in August and September last year was 177. Here's Beef Wellington. He drops that one in there for a strike. Just keeps throwing strike one, getting ahead. 14 straight. First pitch strikes for Colin McHugh. He 
he did not go. That's Dan Isonia down there. You won't get a less impressive pedigree than Colin McHugh. He pitched at Berry College, which I'm told is in Mount Berry, Georgia. The Mets drafted him, 18th round pick in 08. He was traded five years later to the Rockies for outfielder Eric Young. A few months after that, Colorado waived him. The Astros looked at him, saw the spin rate, picked him up, and now he's got a chance to tie his teammate Dallas Keuchel for the American League lead in wins. 50 pitches, 37 strikes. And Castillo rolls that by a diving Altuve for his second hit today. Beef Wellington two for two. I guess you could call this a shift beater with the second baseman on the shortstop side of the field. Well, he goes pretty much right back up the middle of the field. Altuve can't quite get there. Would have been a lot easier play coming from his normal position at second base, but that's not where the Astros want to play their second baseman against Castillo. Jake Lamb, an RBI double his first time, getting the start at first base today. Goldie is the DH, and the shift is on for Houston once again. It always is, it seems. Put your defenders in a position where they're most likely to hit the ball. You don't want to defend against an area they don't hit it. And D backs fans know that when they win, you win at Papa John's the day after every Diamondbacks win. You get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50. PapaJohns.com. One and one. Into the shift, right to Altuve. Bottom four coming up, Astros and Diamondbacks, tied at one. Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Cox Giga Blast. Now will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. By Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. And by Takati Light, born bold. Houston, Texas on a sunny, sweltering Sunday. Steve Berthune, Bob Brentley, Jody Jackson here. D-backs at Astros tied at one. As Marwin Gonzalez leads off the bottom of the fourth against Robbie Ray. Gonzalez stepped back to the mound his first time up. 
Trying to bunt that moved Jed Lowry along after Lowry had led off the previous inning with a double. Gonzalez seven homers already a career high. This guy's a nice player. Play really everywhere. He's a switch hitter. Infield, outfield, either corner spot. Got a little bit of pop in that bat as well. Former Chicago Cubs farm hand. Uh, might have played with Wellington Castillo very early on in Wellington's career. He has played this year. I should say he has started games at shortstop, third base, first base, second base. He can play either corner outfield spot. Couple of former Cubs right there. Very late time granted by Dale Scott. Right by the mound, Pennington has it. One away. Hey fans, now's the time. Tweet us your strongest fan photo. Using the hashtag AZ Data Strong Fan. That's hashtag AZ Data Strong Fan on the Twitter, the whole thing. And you might see your photo on our Diamondbacks broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. So far, Gonzo has done pretty well, I think, overall. Hit a home run his first day and uh, scratched out a broken bat single yesterday just to stay alive. Get one more at bat today. He knows the pressure's on. See that look on his face? Chris Carter. He's still trying to decide which backpack to buy. Tell you what, when you're you're working a game with Gonzo and there's a rain delay, <laughs> I mean, it's he just goes shopping. <laughs> Gets the iPad out and stuff is getting shipped straight to the house. I think one time he bought a tractor online during a rain <laughs> delay. <laughs> yeah, you know what Don Baylor used to say? That money doesn't come with instructions. I'll show you a picture. Like, hey, what do you think of this one? I don't know. How, how would I know? Looks nice. It's What's green. He need a tractor for it? He's got a whole thing going over there. I don't know. He's got a lot going on. Old Gonzalez had a farm. I mean, come on. E I E I O. Well, Robbie having trouble throwing strikes again. He's behind three and one. There's a Bobby Dynamite driving that train. It seems like Astros hitters are compelled to swing at anything up in the strike zone. Just get a bat on it. Take your chances. Second walk issued by Robbie Ray. He loses Carter with one out, and here's Castro. <laughs> Robbie started the opener of this road trip. 4-3 win Monday in Seattle. He was... Coming off a rough outing and a loss to the Marlins in his previous start, but he bounced back nicely at Safe Cole Field against the Mariners. Two runs, six hits in seven. He only walked two and tied a career high. He struck out eight for the second time in three starts. But the command has been a little off here today. Castro doubled his first time up. And he's got another base hit here. Dunks it into left center. Two on and one out for Marisnik. Two catchers in the ball game today are a combined four for four. Marisnik struck out his first time. There's Hank Conger who hit two homers and started the game behind the plate last night for the game. Still, part of the grand slam. Two on, one out. Marisnik has not hit much at all, batting under 190 since May the 1st.
The 1 0. Marisnik is a right hand hitter who, for whatever reason, does not hit all that well in this ballpark. Batting only 195 at home this year, more than 280 on the road. And he has homered just once here at Minute Maid Park all year, so the fit just has not been great for some reason. Astros in this series, three for 15 with runners in scoring position. One and two. And occasionally a right handed hitter, and I'm certainly not indicating that this is Marisnik's problem, but you, you walk into this ballpark as a right handed hitter, and suddenly you become a fly ball pull hitter. And if that's not your strength, if that's not your natural swing and what you've been doing your whole career, you can get yourself in a lot of bad fundamental problems trying to lift that ball in the air to left field. Struck him out. Second time he's gotten Marisnik two down. Third strikeout for Robbie Ray. And you can see Marisnik's frustration there. Chased a bad one. Well, now you've got to deal with Jose Altuve. Two on and two out. Altuve singled his last time up. He's one for two. There goes the helmet. Carter is the runner at second, and Castro the catcher at first. We look from that shot straight away center field how far off the plate Jose Altuve is. I think he's just trying to tempt pitchers into working that outside corner and then drive the ball to the opposite field. That's when we've seen him at his best pull the mistakes and drive the ball to the opposite field otherwise. A lot of times where a hitter stands in the batter's box will tell you the kind of hitter that he is. I think back to Atlanta Braves third baseman Bob Horner former Sun Devil. He used to stand with his toes right on the inside corner of the plate. He wanted a pitch inside that he could pull to left field. So he got right up on top of the dish. He could pull anything. <laughs> Other guys uh, back in my playing days, George Hendricks from the St. Louis Cardinals used to stand so far off the plate. You felt like there's no way he can reach that outside corner. Let's just work him away. Well, that was playing right into his hands. He wanted pitches away so he could extend his arm. And he was a big tall guy with long arms and a long bat and he had kind of that closed stance George real Hendrick. closed stance and you try to hit that outside corner and he dropped the bat head on it and hit a double to the gap in right center. Bobby Ray behind on Altuve two balls and no strikes two on and two out. Good pitch there two and one. Just enough off that breaking ball out to Bay with his home run swing right through it. That's exactly the pitch that the Diamondbacks coaches want to see Robbie Ray use more that slider. They want him to keep mixing up that secondary stuff in there to keep the hitters off balance and off balance a perfect way to describe El Tube on that last swing. Two and two. I mentioned how good Robbie Ray's been this year with runners in scoring position. Opponents hitting under 230 against him with runners in scoring position. The Astros 0 for 4 in that situation today. Another opportunity here. And there's another one in there. Not relying on that fastball so much. 70 pitches for Robbie, 43 strikes. Two and two on Altuve. Ball right in the back. Trying to drop his left arm down there to protect his rib cage. Just didn't quite get it to the spot. Mike Harkey out to the mound. Astros have the bases full with two outs for Carlos Gomez.
Gomez so far 0 for 2. He has struck out in flight out. Interesting in that at bat we saw Robbie go to that slider a couple of times deep in the count and then miss on the fastball to load the bases. Carter is the runner at third Castro at second Altuve at third. Two down for Gomez. That's only the second time all year Robbie Ray has hit a batter with a pitch. All one. It's only the second time all season Robbie Ray has had a bases loaded situation to deal with. Gomez coming off a three for five here last night. There's the helmet. Here's one of those swings you were talking about earlier. 0 and 2. <laughs> Get him a strap or something. Let's see if Robbie goes up the ladder, tries to get him to chase a fastball up in the zone or even above the top of the zone right here. Tried it. Fastball up and away. Gomez won't bite. One and two. Chappelle told us this morning they'd like to see Robbie use those secondary pitches, the changeup and the slider, deeper in counts. But they've been seeing Robbie lately. He's been using that breaking ball early in the count and then just going with fastballs the rest of the at bat. They want to see that changeup, that slider, deeper into the count. Have more confidence in those secondary pitches. It's just a matter of executing them. Might help him put hitters away a little quicker, avoid some of those foul balls and those two strike counts that uh, run up the pitch count. Let's see what they go with here on one and two. Pass ball away again and again. Gomez holds off, and it's two balls and two strikes. As usual, mostly fastball. And he had that fastball Monday at Safeco Field, mid 90s, very late into the ball game. Two and two on Gomez. Another fastball, bounce to second under the glove of Pennington. Carter scores, Castro scores, and it's 3 1 Houston. Fastball outside part of the plate. And he got a good jump on that ball. Uh, just didn't quite make the play there. Looked like he was in a pretty good position to make that diving stop and he snuck underneath his glove into right field for a couple of RBI. Well, there's Carlos Correa. We've got Altuve at third, Gomez at first. Two runs in. Correa has singled and walked. He's one for one. Well, Tuve down there at third, tempting Jake Lamb when he saw the throw over to first. He took another few steps down that third baseline toward the plate. Most teams have a design play with a left handed pitcher on the mound. That guy at first takes a maximum lead, maybe even leaning the wrong direction, trying to draw a throw to first base. And then the speedy runner at third tries to sneak behind him and steal a run. Strike one. Correa has homered five times in his last 13 games. He had two last night. And again, going to the secondary pitchers. Here's Altuve at third. Watch after they throw over. He starts dancing around back there. Yeah, 
Mary Pettis coaching at third. Bobby Ray ahead of Correa 0 and 2. There goes Gomez. He heads for second. He'll make it. Eighth stolen base of the year for Carlos Gomez. And now the Astros have two men in scoring position. And a one and two count on Correa. Ball two. Thirtieth pitch of the inning coming up for Robbie Ray. By a fan down there. Altuve at third, Gomez at second. Two outs, two and two on Correa. A bouncer in the hole. Pennington's over there. Lamb races over to the bag. That was a little tweener there, but the Diamondbacks execute. And Robbie Ray strands two. But the Astros get two. The two run single by Gomez makes it 3 1 Houston. Weekend against the Reds. Randy Johnson's number 51 jersey retirement ceremony takes place before the game on Saturday, August 8th. Every fan with us at the ballpark that day gets this commemorative t shirt. Then Sunday, August 9th, Jay Bell, Orlando Hudson, Reggie Sanders, Travis Lee, Bob Brenly will take the field after the final out of the D backs and Reds game. It's the fourth annual alumni exhibition game. Fetters versus Gonzo. Visit dbacks.com for tickets. Tensions are already running high after uh, you had to step in during the draft yesterday. I, you really had to come, you know, make a ruling from on high there. Kind of calm the waters a bit, even things out. I thought it would go a little smoother between Gonzo and Gracie, but uh, well, there were tensions. Yeah, this has turned uh, from a friendly rivalry and a reunion into quite the uh, spirited battle between those two. Aaron Hill quickly down 0 and 2 against Colin McHugh, who has now thrown. 16 straight first pitch strikes. Now, I certainly don't encourage this, but I'm pretty sure there's some money changing hands after these alumni games. It's supposed to be a friendly game here.
for teams, entertainment purposes only. Teams trying to bring in some ringers. <laughs> so Gonzo tried to draft Fett, and you had to step in and assign him to Team Gracie. Yeah, I mean that, that's built-in drama right there. The Fetters against Gonzo matchup. Correa throws out Hill one away. Now this is the way they broke it down after the draft between Gonzo and Gracie, which was held here uh, this weekend. And you can see the bottom there, commissioner reassignment to Team Gracie. So Fetters is not on Gonzo's team. He's on Gracie's mm -hmm. team. And then uh, you also pointed out, oh, there's Gracie that pointed out that Gonzo, in drafting Brandon Webb, drafted somebody that, that can't or won't pitch. Yeah. But he's so, valuable as a pitching coach. So. I, I wonder about Gonzo's strategy. I'm a little concerned. I think there's some uh, behind-the-scenes chicanery going on. Gonzo trying to convince uh, the big unit in Schill to come See, back yeah, for the uh, reunion game. Yeah. Oh, they just happened to show up. What a surprise. I, I didn't know they were going to be in town. Well, since you're here, you might as well play and play for my team. Well, that's what Gonzo's hoping for, but uh, no confirmation that either one of those gentlemen is going to pitch again. With Colin McHugh, only 60 pitches, 44 strikes. But Pennington shoots this one toward the right field corner, and Penny's got it in there. Marisnik plays it off to Karen, and Cliff Pennington has his third double. And that's the third double today hit by the Diamondbacks against Colin McHugh. Two seamer that didn't quite get out to that outside corner. Penny intercepted it and ripped it down into that corner in right field. An easy double. Tell you what, Cliff Pennington over his last 28 games is hitting better than 330. And only 10 of those games have been starts, but when he's been in there, the bat has been very effective. Here's Nick Ahmed. Dale Scott makes that dramatic strike one call. And another strike one for Colin McHugh. In the hole and in the left, a base hit for Ahmed. Diamondbacks have runners in the corners with one out. Really tough to score from second base on a base hit to left field in this ballpark. That left fielder is positioned so much closer to home plate because of the short porch out there. And also, then he had to hold up and make sure that ball got through the left side before advancing on to third base. And every time in this series, and the Diamondbacks have had lots of them, chances like this to get a couple of guys on, you're looking for that ball down the line or in the gap. They just haven't had that hit yet. And let's see if they can get it here with the top of the order coming up. It's Ender and Ciarte. He was twice flied out. Pennington at third, and Ahmed at first. Ender one for ten in the series. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. This has been the big difference in this series. The Astros, when they've had their chances, well, they've hit home runs. I mean, the Diamondbacks have had just as many chances just trying to get that big hit. Inciarte down 0 2. We've seen a couple nice play by the fans here at Minute Maid Park in this series. Oh, they got the old school jersey. The old school Rainbow Astros jersey. And the Enos Cabell jersey. 0 and 2 on Ender. The battle in there. Fourth strikeout for Colin McHugh. Two down in the fifth, and here's Tomas. Talk about elevating. Yeah, that pitch is shoulder high out over the plate. Well, Tomas has twice tapped back to the mound. 
He is 0 for 2. He's got a pair of hits and RBIs in the series. Four hits on the road trip so far. Walked and scored a run in his three plate appearances last night. Another strike, one from McHugh. Well, this has been a clinic on how to get ahead in the counts. 19 of 21 yeah, first pitch strikes. Done it with his fastball. We've seen him roll some curveballs up there for strike one. We've seen him throw some sliders back door to the left handed hitters to steal strike one. Moss chases one in the dirt. No balls and two strikes. Call that a slider. It, it almost reacts like a cutter at times. Sometimes it has some downward movement, at other times it's very flat, but he's been able to mostly keep it on that outer third of the plate, breaking away from the right handed hitters. He's been leaning on that slider a lot lately. Is it hard to catch guys that have a lot of spin on their breaking balls? Well, you just have to be aware of it uh, on balls in the dirt because you can imagine anything that's spinning more than the average pitch when it hits the dirt, it's going to bounce awkwardly more than the average pitch. I mean, a breaking ball from a right handed pitcher coming into the catcher, when it hits in the dirt, it's going to naturally kick back to your left because of the spin on the baseball. And certainly you've got to know that as a catcher and position yourself properly in order to block it. Well, Mara strikes out. And Colin McHugh strands two. He's got five strikeouts and a 3 1 lead. players have done a nice job of keeping their emotions in check but once they go down the steps behind the dugout not only the D-backs players but a lot of players have been taking their anger out on the door right at the base of the steps from the dugout a couple of those dings are mine I think and somebody really had a bad day recently now I understand that uh, these are your pictures right yeah we were down in the dugout yesterday uh, talking to the players and the coaches and on my way back up I noticed that and uh, I thought it might be Kind of informative and fun to show fans that these guys aren't always cool, calm, and collected. They don't always accept bad at bats well, but fortunately, most of the time they take it out of sight down in the tunnel. And uh, you know, I, I kind of miss Carlos Zambrano. <laughs> <laughs> I miss when he'd take it out on the water cooler. Those or his those, catcher. Yeah, yeah, well, that's another thing. But Zambrano versus the Gatorade bucket Ooh. was always highly entertaining. There's been a couple of good snaps lately. Andre Ethier went off, a guy that yeah. never loses his cool. He uh, had a 
bad snap in the dugout the other day. It's that time of year. You know, we're getting into the dog days here. The temperatures are heating up, and a lot of players aren't having the kind of season they hope. There it goes, El Oso Blanco. Evan Harris, that's his 17th. It's another Astros homer, and it's 4-1 Houston. Bobby Dynamite gets that train cranked up. Just the fourth home run given up all year by Robbie Ray. Tremendous opposite field sock here from Evan Gaddis. Fastball up and out over the plate. He hit that ball to right field like a left-handed pole hitter. That's why in the Venezuelan Winter League they called him the White Bear. He became a legend, and you can see why. He's he's a throwback man. I mean, he is just old school, country strong. No batting gloves, short sleeves. Here it is, Jed Lowry. There you go. Cool him off. Should have done that before the attack. <laughs> <laughs> Lowry has doubled and scored a run. He's one for two. Robbie Ray ahead, no balls, two strikes. And he lifts this in the air, right center field. The Osmani Tomas runs it down on the track for the first out here in the home half of the fifth. Evan Gaddis. Working as a janitor for a while. He was making pizzas. He ran a ski lift. And there it is. El Oso Blanco, the white bear. I'm not sure who that gentleman is, but every time uh, Big Evan Gaddis has made his way up into the on deck circle, they kind of salute each other. And we're in the Oso Blanco jersey. And he found his way in the Venezuelan Winter League. And Figured it out, and he's been hitting home runs ever since. Two seasons in Atlanta, now here in Houston. 0 and 1 on Marwin Gonzalez. Gaddis 43 home runs the last two years, playing for the Braves, and it's Dealt here to the Astros in January. Andrew Chafin warming up at the Diamondback bullpen. Seven home runs now for the Astros in this series. Accounting for 13 of their 17 runs. And Robbie Ray strikes out Gonzalez. Fourth strikeout for Robbie. Two down. <laughs> Here's Chris Carter. Carter does not have it at bat yet. He's got an RBI sack fly. He's also walked in the room. Sliders this inning from Robbie Ray. What Chip Hale and Mike Harkey want to see. There's another one misses away, and it's three and two. He had three and two on Carter last time and walked him. Slider tries for the back foot. He didn't go, says Dan Isonia. Yeah, he's walked harder for the second time today. Third walk for Robbie Ray. And 
Dodd is just trying to get through five innings at this point at 97 pitches. Here's Jason Castro. Who's two for two, a double, a single, he scored a run. Chip Hale on the phone. Yes, sir. CB Buckner, 0 and 2. Pitch number 100 on the way. Boy, Conger catching last night. Had three hits, including two homers. Castro catching today. So far, two for two. Astros catchers. Not this time. 100 pitches, 62 strikes for Robbie. Houston with four runs on seven hits. He has walked three. He's got four strikeouts. He's also hit a batter. Two and two. Diamondbacks finding out these guys are hard to beat in this ballpark. Houston 37 and 18 at Minute Maid Park this year. The best home record in the American League. They've won 13 of their last 15 here. Three and two. Strike three, dropped it in there. Fifth strikeout for Robbie Ray. But Evan Gaddis hits one 407 feet, his 17th home run of the year. And after five, the Diamondbacks trail the Astros 4-1.
game what it's going to present you, but you don't want Goldschmidt coming up with, with the game on the line without somewhere to put him. You know, and, and, and he's such a gifted hitter. He's such a, uh, an ambassador for, for d baseball. I got to meet him and, and talk to him at the, um, you know, at the All-Star game this year in Cincinnati. And um, the more you get to know about him, the more you realize you just prefer him take a day off or, or take a walk to first base so that uh, you don't have to deal with some of the damage that he does. Well, he'll lead off the sixth. So far, Goldie 0 for 2. He has flied out and struck out. And I like the way that AJ put that. A great ambassador for the Diamondbacks. He sure is. He's a great ambassador for the game of baseball in general. The way he goes about his work every day, the way he's a leader with his teammates on and off the field, and certainly the numbers he puts up on a consistent basis. I've said it before if he's playing in New York or LA or Chicago one of the major markets getting a lot of ink and a lot of media time he'd be the face of Major League Baseball. Oh, he'd be Mike Trout. Yeah. yeah. No question. He won't be the face of the DH. This is his second career start as the designated hitter. The first was earlier this year. Speaking of Mike Trout, June 16th at Anaheim. Goldie went 0 for 3 with a walk in that ball game. A 4-1 D-backs loss. Skies this one up in that mixture of artificial and natural light. Gomez has it. And Goldie's 0 for 3. But the top four. In the Diamondback lineup so far, 0 for 11 with five strikeouts. Mm. They've had their chances a couple of times. The middle and bottom portions of the order here today have done a pretty good job. But Enciarte is 0 for 3. Tomas 0 for 3. Goldie 0 for 3. Here's Peralta, who so far has struck out twice. Right by Dave McKay at first. David does have three hits in the series, and on this road trip, he is seven for 17 with five RBIs. Diamondbacks trying to get it going here. They've been out hit 7 5, they trail it 4 1. Up the middle and into center, a base hit for Peralta. Running up there, full speed ahead. I mean, that's what it'll take in this ballpark. Get our own runaway train on base here. That's a perfect fit. You got a train and a track and a whole thing up there. Get the freight train on there. Leaving the station. There's Bobby Dynamite. Look, he's tweeting. Either that or he's asleep. Bobby Dynamite. <laughs> Sounds like a cartoon character, isn't it? Wellington Castillo, two for two, a double and a single. He has scored the D-backs only run. Came in on a Jake Lamb RBI double in the second. There's Bobby Dynamite. At Astros Train Guy, if you're on the Twitter. He tweets out some uh, fun pictures from up there sometimes. Saving a seat for his buddy, Lightning, Todd Walsh. Todd was here last time we were here. He went up there and rode on the train with Bobby Dynamite. Very tight. Yeah. Not everybody can do that. You got to, well, as always, you got to know a guy. And in this case, Todd knows Bobby Dynamite. But when your name is Bobby Dynamite, I bet you know a lot of people. You got your own train? Of course, the late Ron Santo used to say that train up there with the car full of pumpkins. <laughs> Ron, this is Minute Maid Park. I think they might be oranges. Well, they look big, like pumpkins. They're big oranges. <laughs> well, he just does get a piece of that one. They do in, in his defense look mm, like pumpkins yeah. from back here. Yeah, they're oranges. Let's 
Jesse Welly wake up Bobby Dynamite out there. Hit one off the train. Well, the way he's been going, four homers in his last four games and two hits today, he just might. 80 pitches for McHugh, 61 strengths. Wellington Castillo was asked about his recent run at the plate. He says it's just playing time. Does any hitter, the more you play, you're going to get better. You're going to see better pitches. You're going to be able to make the adjustments. And for him, that has always been the issue in Chicago, Seattle, and now here. And he launches that one up on the tracks. Way out of there, but foul. Oh, wow. That might have broken that glass back there if he straightened it out. That was launched. Those people probably thought they had no chance of getting a ball in the game today, but a hanging breaking ball to Wellington Castillo, and he absolutely blasts it down that left field line. Foul. Beef mode. A bouncer. Correa behind the bag. What a play. Carlos Correa. He's a big kid. They wondered if he'd be agile enough to play shortstop. And at 6'4", 210, the answer is yes, at 20 years old. They're just amazed at the body control, not only of Correa, but Nick Ahmed. We've seen this year those athletic shortstops that can contort their body into all kinds of different directions at the same time and still make accurate throws across the diamond to first. What a play. Peralta moves into second. Two outs now for Lamb, who had an RBI double in the second inning. He's one for two. Jake slowly but surely starting to barrel up the ball. Launched one into the upper deck here in right field on Friday. Hit one hard down the line in his first at bat today. And he's got five hits on the road trip. And the Astros defensively in the outfield, shading the center fielder Gomez a few steps over into the gap in left center, which leaves a ginormous gap in right center because Marisnik is kind of guarding the line out there in right. First time all day that Colin McHugh has been down. Two balls and no strikes. And he drops that one in there. Two and one. Whew. Dale Scott, the crew chief, back there. Wow, where was that? Not in the strike zone. Nope. A little dribbler to second. L2 they has it. And they strand Peralta. Bottom six coming up. Diving back trail at 4 1.
And back home went to Woodlands High School. How about Cliff Pennington, though, as well, a native of Corpus Christi, Texas. In fact, his family and friends are all here, about 30 people here today, including some guys he's played baseball with since his Little League days, and then at Carroll High School in Corpus Christi. And then, of course, Cliff went on to Texas A&M. But they had about 50 people here yesterday, his wife Missy told me. It's been a lot of fun for him to play in front of friends and family. And Cliff has played in every game of this series, filling in nicely with A.J. Pollock out of the lineup playing left field and then of course today guys over at second base he's been so versatile and, and valuable for this Diamondbacks team has yeah, made some nice plays over there he's also got a walk and a double at the plate getting to start at second base in place of Chris Owings today new pitcher for the Diamondbacks hit the lefty Andrew Chafin as Jake Marisnik the nine hole hitter leads off the Astros six he is 0 for 2 struck out twice against Robbie Ray Numbers on Chafin this year. A 2.68 ERA is 42nd appearance. He's been very good. He can get you a big out when you need it. He can give you some length back there. Former starter. And we might see after his start Monday in Washington, D.C., Zach Godley do a little bit of this. They're watching Zach Godley's innings. And after his next start against Doug Fister tomorrow at Nats Park, by then Chase Anderson might be ready to be back. And then you're going to wonder, all right, what do we do with Godley? You've got to be careful because he's a, you know, been pitching all year, too. He's a young arm. you got to watch the beginning. So maybe you know, once Godley loses that rotation spot and Chase comes back, you'll see Zach that work out at the bullpen a little bit. Chip Hale talked about that this morning. This is away and it's one and two. So far so good for that young man. He'll face the Nationals tomorrow. Against Doug Fister a 405 afternoon start back home to the great state of Arizona. First of four from D.C. and Marisnik strikes out for the third time today. Well, we have a quick moment here. Let's take a look at our guy code. This day in Major League Baseball history back in 1981, longtime Tigers play by play voice Ernie Harwell, the recipient of the Ford C. Frick Award, the fifth recipient of the Ford Frick Award, inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And uh, the reason we're highlighting Ernie Harwell today, the late Ernie Harwell, he was without a doubt the single nicest man I ever met in my life. That's saying something. He never had a bad thing to say about anybody or anything. Always had a smile on his face. Always glad to be at the ballpark. Just an absolutely genuine human being. Jose Altuve. Also on this day, VB, Paul Goldschmidt. His first career home run. Off guess who? Tim Lincecum. <laughs> So that was on this day in 2011. Another one in 1998, Randy Johnson's first start as an Astro. Ernie Harwell. A had, little bit earlier. Yeah, Ernie Harwell had that grill. Oh, what a set of pipes oh, he had. Man, huh? He was special. I, I told the story earlier today. I had an opportunity to go on an MLB cruise in the offseason and uh, several current players, some retired players, and some announcers. And uh, one of my duties on the course of the cruise. As that one slapped through into right field for a base hit for Altuve. I had to introduce and interview Ernie Harwell. I said, well, there's something wrong with this picture here. You know, you're talking about one of the greatest play-by-play -play voices, greatest interviewers in the history of baseball. What in the world am I doing interviewing him? But uh, well, it was a great pleasure to meet Ernie and uh, spend some time with him on that cruise for a week. Of course, that press box at Tiger Stadium, that was at old Tiger Stadium. I mean, you were right in the middle of it then. Here's Gomez. A two-run single his last time up. Sends this out to Tomas and right. Two down. He had one of the best views in baseball for all those years. Well, here's Carlos Correa, a whole other generation. 
He has singled and walked one for two. Pat Neshek, the Astros reliever, was talking about Correa and what they've seen from this young man. And he said, you know, you see a lot of kids get called up to the big leagues and they're scared or they're really annoying and uh, nobody on the team wants to deal with them. But Neshek says this kid is actually kind of leading the Astros. He's become a leader, a face of the team now and for at least a decade or so to come. Very different young guy. Check swing. And as we saw, he can hit and he can play the position. It's that body control wasn't able to quickly get a good grip on that baseball. So as he's flying through the air with his back to first base, his feet come down, he finds the grip on the ball and then completes the throw on to first base. Chief and ahead 0 and 2. The Astros set up their clubhouse so that Correa dresses right next to Jose Altuve. But it's Altuve who says the rest of the Astros are all learning from Correa. I mean, they know it's no secret he's going to be one of the best players in the game. And it's remarkable to hear about his teammates talk about him as a leader of the team. He's the shortstop, he's the three hole hitter. As he strikes out here, all at the age of 20. Two strikeouts in the inning for Andrew Chafin. We are through six. Diamondbacks trail the Astros 4 1. Brought to you in part by Oregano's Pizza Bistro, your neighborhood pizza joint. We are athletic supporters. By Card Power from Arizona Federal Credit Union. Now that's the power of us. And by Arizona Breakfast Weekend. Bowls of bacon, piles of pancakes continue this week during Arizona's Breakfast Weekend. Go to ArizonaBreakfastWeekend.com for more details. In Houston, seventh inning at Minute Maid Park. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly, and Jody Jackson with you as Aaron Hill leads it off against right hander Colin McHugh, who so far has given up only one run on six hits. He has walked one, struck out five. Hill, Pennington, Ahmed, 7 8 9, due up. Aaron has flied out and lined out. 0 for 2. Here's a fly ball deep left field and that ball is off the wall. Aaron Hill rolls into second with his 10th double. 
That's where the nooks and crannies come in here. If that ball's hit about five, maybe ten feet to the left, it gets into the Crawford boxes. But because it was hit just to the left center field side of the Crawford boxes, it bangs off the wall and stays in play. The one time he doesn't pull the ball. Yeah. <laughs> and we're here in this ballpark. <laughs> it's the Diamondbacks fourth double here today. Got to get something going. Cliff Pennington now who has walked and doubled himself. I mean, it's funny. He hits that ball where it is. It's off the wall. It's off that garage door out there. Hits it a little more to the left, and it's on the concourse. A little flare to Altuve. One away. Well, as promised, let's see how Gonzo did. It's time to take a look at our AZ Data Strong fan photo brought to you by T-Mobile. And as selected by Luis Gonzalez on the Brenly committee, Ooh. it's Sharon. No, oh, one of those people is Sharon, apparently. I'm not a huge fan of the luchador mask, but that's pretty solid there, Gons. Gonzo's had a good weekend. Yeah, he has. Stay hot. And a reminder. Tweet us your fan photo with a hashtag AZ Data Strong Fan, and maybe a member of the Brenly Committee will select your photo. Brought to you by T Mobile. Okay. Nick Ahmed singled his last time up. He's one for two. Idea. Take a look. Jed Lowry was playing way back at third base before that last pitch. Now he'll shorten up a couple of steps to see Will Harris beginning to warm up in that Astros bullpen. The former Diamondback. Now for the third time in the last four hitters, Colin McHugh has fallen behind 2 0. He may be running on empty here at 93 pitches. Ahmed blasts that to center. And it's a base hit. Aaron Hill had to hold up. And the Diamondbacks again have something going here. They're on the corners with one out for the top of the order. That's Nick's second hit today. Multi-hit game for Nick Ahmed today. The last time he had more than one hit in a ball game was July 8th at Texas. We need to get him going too. So it's Aaron Hill at third, Nick Ahmed at first, one out. And it's time for the top of the order to do something here today. And Ciarte, Tomas, Goldie, one, two, and three, all hitless in the ballgame so far. Here's Ender, who struck out his last time up, 0 for 3. Popped him up. Altuve on the mound has it. Two down. They have had their chances in this series. There's no question. It's up to Tomas. 0 for 3. Struck out his last time up. Chip Hale was talking before the ball game this morning about players in their first year of playing the 162 game schedule and he was talking about Tomas and not running out that ground ball last night. He said look this guy has been a very hard worker this year especially all the work he's put in on his hitting not to mention the work at third base this spring. You know, the work ethic has not at all been an issue with the Asmani and Tomas he just to. Uh, File that under the heading of uh, it's a long season and uh, it's kind of a a rude awakening for some guys the first time they go through it. 
Well, I applaud Chip for uh, trying to nip it in the bud. Uh, too many times you let something like that go. Well, that won't happen again. And then suddenly it does happen again and again and again. And it just seeps its way through the entire roster. And before you know it, you got a whole bunch of guys that aren't running anything out. And that has not been the D backs way, uh, especially with Paul Goldschmidt leading the parade down there at first base. I mean, come on, Dale Scott. Holy Man. cow. Two and one. There's another strike, two and two. Yasmani, for his part, said absolutely no problem between him and the manager. They're all good. They were talking. And so we move on. With McHugh about to throw pitch number 100. Two balls, two strikes, two on, and two out. Running backs looking for that big hit that seems to have eluded them since uh, late in the ball game on Friday. Why would you throw anything in the strike zone if you're calling the cue? Yeah. He strands two. Six strikeouts for McHugh. We stretch in Houston, and it's 4-1 Astros. Here's what's next, brought to you by Century Link. Evan Gaddis, who homered his last time up, leads it off to the Astros. That was our Cox Gig Life High Speed Highlights. Seventh inning here in Houston. Our healer of her game summary, Colin McHugh so far. Very effective. A run on eight hits in seven. It was a rough outing for Robbie Ray. Not as sharp as we've seen him in the past. And the Diamondbacks, despite the fact they've got just as many hits as the Astros, have not been able to come up with the big hits. And now they'll go back to the bullpen. David Hernandez will pitch the seventh. His 16th appearance of the year, a 3 2 9 ERA after one scoreless sitting of relief by Andrew Chafin. It'll be Evan Gaddis, Jed Lowry, Marwin Gonzalez, 4, 5, and 6 in the Houston 7. As they play deep in the heart of Texas down here in Houston. You ever have a cowboy hat? Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I've got a couple of them. When would you wear your cowboy hat collection? Uh, the evening on the diamond. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boy, you really went all out for that <laughs> this year. I remember that. You looked like uh, Jerry Glanville. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I went to a, a shop there in uh, in Scottsdale, not far from where I live, and I uh, was looking around there and trying to decide which direction to go. And I turn around, and who was behind me shopping? A.J. Pollock, buying his goods for the evening on the diamond. Yeah, that country cowboy theme has really taken off for our annual event at Chase Field. Here's Evan Gaddis. Once killed a bear with his bare hands. I probably. There was a. There you go. Now I got destroyed on Twitter because I was the only dope that didn't go out and buy a cowboy hat. Yeah. That's as close to Western as I can get right there. But you look like Jerry Glanville who used to coach uh, the Falcons. And uh, he coached the Oilers. I forget. I think he did. Yeah. yeah. After Bum Phillips. Bum Phillips was a legend. Oh, remember, kind of remember cool. Love You Blue down here? They'd sing that's the Houston Oilers. Yeah, I don't Houston that. Oilers. Don't remember that. I'll take your word. There's a great piece of NFL film with uh, Bum Phillips coaching the Oilers back in the glory days, the late 70s. They'd always lose to the Steelers all the time in every big game. And somebody made a bad call against the Oilers and Bum Phillips and his thick, Texas accent just you can't do that you can't do that if you do that you're gonna have more hell over it in a little bit <laughs> he's got his cowboy boots and his hat on OA bum Phillips have to get out your translation dictionary <laughs> Texas to English English to Texas you can't do that 2-2 two -two. Gattis strikes out 96 from Hernandez one away Been tailing fastball running up and in this time Gaddis cannot catch up to 96 in that location. David Hernandez lately Bob starting to look like the old David Hernandez. Be a little finer with his command whereas before yeah, I think he was just throwing and hoping it was near the strike zone. Now he's hitting spots mixing in that breaking ball moving the fastball in and out up and down really good to see. Jed Lowry. Double in scored in the second. He's one for three. David Hernandez back to back strikeouts two down. Hey D backs fans we are excited to introduce to you Pepsi Limon made with just a hint of real lime juice a little bit of lime and a whole lot of flavor pick up yours today Pepsi Limon available at your local retailer. A very intense D back fan right there locked in he's got the glove ready D backs t-shirt on right along the foul line there. Arwen Gonzalez. I think he had a Raiders lanyard on there. Lanyard, a word I rarely use. <laughs> you wear it every day. Yeah, you would think. <laughs> Doesn't come up that often. Hey, have you seen that lanyard? Hey, is that a new lanyard? <laughs> I mean, those are things you never hear. What happened to your old lanyard? I got a new lanyard. I can't stop saying lanyard. There it is. <laughs> the Raiders is a split. Just win, baby. That is a Raiders lanyard and a D backs t shirt. Well, David Hernandez a strike away here from punching out the side in order. Back with you tomorrow as uh, we take to the skies again after the ball game here. First of four from Washington, D.C. The B backs of the Nationals, Zach Godley and Doug Fister. Diamondback Live pregame show at 3 30 tomorrow. A 4 05 first pitch in the valley. 
Hey, uh, one first place team, and we've got to go play another mm -hmm. first place team. This is a tough trip. And it continues. We mentioned this before. Phoenix to Seattle over 1,100 miles. Seattle here to Houston over 1,800 miles. Houston to D.C. over 1,200 miles. And then D.C. back to Phoenix nearly 2,000, a total of 6,200 miles covered on this road trip. How are the downloads going? I'm locked in, You're locked in for this yeah. one? Yeah. I've always got Woodstock. But that's always, I can always go back to that. Watch Joe Cocker, Richie Havens, Sly and the Family Stone. That's great entertainment at any time. But I've got a couple movies downloaded. We all have our staples. Just don't eat the brown acid. Two and two. Slaps it down the line, and that's a foul ball. Well, not easy to hit one foul down there in that area where the stands come out so close to the foul line. You got about six inches of foul ground in there. That's a little like Wrigley Field down in the corners. Just uh, about one step, and you're up against the side wall. That one actually hit the side wall. Clearly foul. Oh, oh hey. the lanyard man has it. Well, she's got the uh, giveaway fedora. Good fans. That's right. You gotta get him a diamondback lanyard. Yeah. There's that word again. Full count now. The Rangers. Oh, uh, I think she's having a hamburger today. Customizing that burger. Yeah, good call. Nolan Ryan uh, has all the the beef concession here in the ballpark. Everywhere you go, Nolan Ryan's beef is everywhere. Cattle country. Ball four. There's Nolan Ryan, Texas beef. There's beef Wellington, and of course there's uh, Nolan Ryan's Texas beef. Chris Carter now, and this guy talked about how he either homers, walks, or strikes out. Carter today has an RBI sack fly. He's walked twice and scored a run. He's seen 20 pitches so far in his three plate appearances. Way up in the air. Shallow left center. Ahmed trying to find it up there, and Enciate calls him off at the last moment. And they strand that two-out walk. That one was in orbit. It's 4-1 as we go to the eighth.
Every weekday, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1 with highlights, instant analysis, live look-ins from around the league. It's MLB Whip Around weekdays at 4 on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. It's Arizona Diamondbacks baseball presented by Sanderson Ford. At Nishak is on for the Astros as we open up the eighth inning here at Minute Maid Park. A rubber game of the three game set. Diamondbacks trail it 4 1. And Nishak uh, had a rough go of things his last appearance here. He pitched the 10th inning on Friday, gave up homers to Castillo and Lamb. Back to back homers. And Goldie leads off the eighth. Yeah, it was a rough one. And he did come back to strike out Yasmani Tomas before giving way to Josh Fields for the rest of the ball game. One of the tougher guys to hit with that crazy delivery. With those high socks, he's got a lot of orange on out there. Yeah. Looks like a traffic cone. I've never seen anybody wear anything other than white socks underneath the stirrups. What's he got? I don't know. Well, maybe that's just the heel of the sock itself. Uh, kind of hiked it. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was wearing uh, sanitary socks underneath the stirrups and uh, was wearing dark colored sandies. I didn't think so. Maybe he has on D backs fun socks. He might. He's got sad feet. No fun facing him, I can tell you that, uh, the way he pitches. Just a very unorthodox delivery. Uh, totally designed to throw off the timing of the hitter up there at the plate. Not a traditional wind up where you see the guy pump his arms over his head and lift that front leg and then eventually pivot and turn and throw to home plate. He just kind of jumps at the hitter. Goldie waves at that one. Strikes out for the second time today. He's 0 for 4. One away in the game. David Peralta now. Singled his last time up. One for three. Well, Nishak, as you just saw, really tough on righties. Right hand batters hitting a buck 60 against him this year. Lefties 190. He's ahead of Peralta and on. Going to beef mode here with two outs. Really jumped to David Peralta that time and then threw a change up out of that quick delivery. That'll fool a lot of hitters. Or the top of the diamond back order today. Ender and Ciarte, 0 for 4. Tomas hitless, he struck out twice. Goldie hitless, he struck out twice. Peralta struck out three times. Yeah, eight strikeouts in the game for the D backs, all coming to the top four hitters in the lineup. Castillo two for three, a double and a single. He has scored a run. Beef, it's what's for dinner. That's oh, really. Jason Castro. One of those catchers hitting home runs. It's this up in the air. Gomez in center, back it up near that hill out there. And he runs it down. Nishak a 1 2 3 8. Diamondbacks trail it 4 1.
runs that one down for the final eight of the top uh, final out of the top of the eighth inning. Here it is, Gomez. Now he's an Astro now. He had that one just shy of the warning track out there when he was with the Milwaukee Brewers. They were here, and that was June. He had to go all the way up the hill. How about this one? A couple of years ago, off the bat of Jason Castro, all the way up Tal's Hill. What a catch! Oh man, right near the flagpole. 436 out there to dead center. And sure enough, Castro, who hit that one, will lead off the Houston eight. And they're getting rid of Towels Hill at the end of this year. Oliver Perez on for the 46th time. So in lieu of a flagpole on the playing field, they're going to park a tractor out behind second base just to make it more interesting. Yeah, one of the ones that Gonzo bought. Yeah. Online. Obstacle baseball. Yeah, that, I've been out there. That thing is padded, but uh, I don't imagine it really means a whole lot when you're running full speed uphill into it at first. So they finally convinced uh, the powers that be here, maybe we should put that behind the fence. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to move the fence in a little bit too, actually. So that'll be next year here. And that'll make Evan Gaddis and Chris Carter and some of those big hitters that have hit long fly balls out in that territory that are just run down by speedy center fielders. That'll make them happy. Castro, a couple of hits today. Supposedly, no one has ever actually run into the flagpole, but uh, you know what they say it's always funny until someone pokes an eye out or something. <laughs> I understand we've had a benches clearing brawl this mm. afternoon, one of the games. Mm. Reds and Pirates. Yeah. McCutcheon got hit. And uh, the Pirates retaliated and off they go. Pirates once again uh, leading the world in hit batsmen this season. I wonder if anybody will get upset. The national media only seems to get upset when it happens to the Diamondbacks. Or when they're involved, as Perez strikes out Castro. Take a look at the Direct TV AL West standings. AJ Hitch's ball club. They're up three on the Angels right now. How about this? Houston has gone 10 and 4 since the All Star break. And in those 14 games, they've outscored their opponents 74 to 41. Now, 10 strikeouts for Diamondbacks pitchers. Here's Marisnik, who's punched out three times. In the meantime, the Angels have lost five in a row, including a sweep right here against these Astros to move Houston into first place in that AL West. Dodgers have Matt Latos on the mound today trying to sweep. L.A. of Anaheim of Orange County of uh, the whole thing. And Mike Lake, former Reds great, making his debut for the Giants. They picked him up at the deadline. They were trailing 2-0 at Texas in the seventh last week. Yeah. The Astros hold on here to win this one 4 1. Colin McHugh will get win number 13. Tying him with his teammate Dallas Keikel, who won last night for the American League lead. And those two have been a pretty effective combination. Keikel and McHugh, they add the kid McCullers, they get Casimir, they get Fires, and they are ready for the stretch run here in Houston. Fire supposed to start Tuesday at Texas. Two and two on Jake Marisnik. Popped up first base side, fair territory, drifting toward the line. And Cliff Pennington runs it down. Your Arizona Federal Credit Union power players of the game. Colin McHugh about to match Keuchel if this final holds at 13 and 5. No 
Jones and Altuve. Really for Colin McHugh, he had not won a game in the big leagues, uh, parts of three different seasons in the major leagues, twice with the Mets, once with the Colorado Rockies. He was 0 and 8. The ERA sneaking up on 10, but since coming here to Houston, he's been a different animal. Astros this year are 30 and 14. If this score holds, and game started by Keuchel and McHugh. Which I think is a show on USA right after Rizzoli and Isles. <laughs> a couple of oddball detectives fighting it out with their belligerent captain. I'll have your badge, Keuchel. You'll have to go through McHugh if you want my badge. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> My wife loves that show. I was watching Rizzoli and I. I can never keep up. It's CSI, uh, Wichita. I don't know. There's like 10 of them. Cagney and Lacey. Yeah. I, I quit then. I stopped watching after the Rockford Files. Yes, you struck out. Altuve punches out. And we go to the ninth. Diamondbacks down 4-1. Baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Ninth inning in Houston, Texas, and here's Luke Gregerson to close this thing out. They don't really have a closer this year. They went out this winter and they got Gregerson, they got Neshek. They've had quals, you know, all guys who've been very good setup guys over the course of their careers, but never really closers. They were supposed to be in on Chapman here, Kimbrell as well. And, uh, you know, if there's a, a potential weak spot here with this Astros lineup as they try and win the division title, it might be they don't have a bona fide closer. And they kind of so far have ham and egged it, but Gregerson's done a good job, 21 of 24 in save opportunity. Just a fastball slider combination from Luke Gregerson. When he gets in trouble with runners on base, you'll see almost all sliders from Gregerson. Lamb, Hill, and Pennington, six, seven, and eight, due up for the Diamondbacks in the ninth. Jake an RBI double in the second. He's one for three. Luke Gregerson made a name for himself in San Diego with that wipeout slider. Twenty one saves the most by an Astros pitcher since Matt Lidstrom had twenty three five years ago.
Shoots it the other way toward the Crawford boxes. And that's a fair ball for Jake Lamb, who takes the turn. Rasmus picks it up. And Jake Lamb is in there with his second double today, his ninth of the year. Good start to the inning here. Jake Lamb going with the pitch. That's the Diamondbacks' fifth double in the ball game. A little bit of a misplay here by Colby Rasmus uh, off his glove into foul territory. I think Lamb would have had a double anyway. That ball popped high in the air after hitting the wall out there and left. So the Diamondbacks have now out hit the Astros 9 to 8. Five of their nine hits are doubles, yet they trail it 4 1. Here's Aaron Hill who doubled his last time up. Still waiting for Aaron to just pull one in this ballpark. One of the great pull hitters just blew up the Crawford boxes in batting practice here this weekend, but uh, has yet to really lace one down that left field line. Ballpark tailor made for him. A roller in the hole, Correa. On the way, Lamb stays put. Our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. How about the play that Cliff Pennington made to end the first? Well, we're talking about body control uh, in regards to Carlos Correa. Not a bad job there by Cliff Pennington running straight out toward right field. All his momentum carrying him that direction, able to wheel around and throw back to first base right on the money. You know, and he made at least one great throw off that wall out there, Bob, last night when he started the game in left field. The ball that Gaddis hit, actually. Penny has walked and doubled. He's one for two. Boy, look at the room on the left-hand side. They've got the shift on here. And Gomez pretty much straight away in center. Look at all that room in left center field. Nobody there at shortstop. It's a 4-2 ball game if he can hit it right there. And of course, this defensive alignment all set up based on past history and the spray charts that the Astros put together before every series. But we've seen them bunch their outfielders, put the right fielder and left fielder in the gaps. Bunching guys in the middle of the field. In this case, we've seen him split it wide open. The corner outfielder is kind of protecting the line, leaving Carlos Gomez to cover a lot of ground on both gaps. And he drives it out to right. Arisnik is there. Two down. Diamondbacks have had their chances today. Three for 12 now with runners in scoring position. Back with you tomorrow from Nats Park in D.C. Game one of a four-game series, the Diamondbacks and the Washington Nationals. Zach Godley tomorrow versus Doug Fister. Nick Ahmed has singled his last two times up. 33,871 on hand today. The Astros one out away from taking the series. Did not go, says Dan Isonia. Two and zero. Trying to get one more base runner so they can get the tying run to the plate with two outs. And 
and Sayarte would be next. In there for a strike, two and one. Correa at shortstop. And the Astros win the ball game for one. They take the series. And that's Houston's 60th win of the year. They move to 14 games over 500. D backs out hit the Astros here today 9 8, but they lose it 4 1. They yeah, need to find a way to bunch some of those hits together. Top of the order really struggled in the ball game today. And you can see why this Astros team is in first place. A lot of tools. Uh, they have a very specific brand of baseball that they like to play. And so far this season, it's been working for them. 